welcome to RT World. My name is Mr. Kate, and uh, where, where are you? No one's here. Oh. oh, hey, there you guys are. Welcome to today's video. We're doing breathing patterns today. And as you know, this is RT World, all, all things RT. And today we're gonna go over breathing patterns. Breathing patterns is very important to us as RTs, respiratory therapists. You can see over here, here's the breathing patterns we're gonna cover in today's video. We also always, always, and if you know me, you know you need to know your normal values. And in our breathing, our respiratory rate, our normal value is 12 to 20 breaths per minute. So hang on to that. All right, so let's get started. All right, so we're gonna see breathing pattern. What does that look like? Well, here you'll see, this is a breathing pattern right here. And so let's break this down. What are we looking at here? Well, we have our vertical axis, the one that goes up and down. That is a representation of tidal volume. All right, we look at our horizontal axis here at the bottom. This is a, represent, a representation of time. And this would be in seconds, as you can see, 15, 30, 45, 60. This is a one minute line here, all right? So anything else we can see? Well, we see there's a rate and it says 12 per minute. Well, how can we tell that? Well, you count these peaks, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, 9, 10, 11, 12. 12 breaths were given, or the patient did 12 breaths in one minute. And that's how we can see that. Now we can also look and say, well, here's zero, and then the inspiration happened, and it got up to 500. So they're getting a tidal volume of 500 every breath, right? So we can say, and this is consistent. And there's another thing you can also see, and we'll learn this in other videos, but just calling it out here, this is a consistent 500. That means it's assist control. It's given 500 tidal volume every breath. So that's another video if you don't understand this at this time, but this is where we have our rate and our volume. So inspiration, expiration, slight period of pause, inspiration, expiration, inspiration, expir expiration, all the way for 12. 12 breaths per minute. And as we're here, and the first one on the list, this is a normal breathing pattern. This is the representation of that normal, which we call upnea, right? That is normal breathing. Upnea, normal breathing. That's all that means. That means that this patient has a consistent, equal pattern of 12 to 20 breaths per minute between that range, right? That is a normal breathing pattern. And that's what it'll look like here. It'll look something like this pattern here. That is normal, all right? So let's go down the list. Hypopnea, right? So hypopnea, well, you can go down here to the fourth one on the list, which is bradypenia, right? These can be associated, these can be combined, very similar, okay? So this means anything that's Consistent and normal, but what? Less than 12 breaths per minute. Less than 12 breaths per minute means that it's, and think of that guys, just like you do with bradycardia and stuff, but this is breathing, right? This is what? Bradypenia, slow breathing, right? That's what that means. It means slow or shallow breathing. Hypopnea, bradypenia, okay? Hypo, low. Go to the next one, hyper, we know this, right? Prefix, hyper means more. So same thing that you saw with hypopnea and bradypenia, well, hyperpnea and tachypnea are accelerated patterns, means that more than 20 breaths per minute. That's what we're gonna put in this category, okay? So these things can be combined. Now, is there anything else that we can associate with patterns? For sure, or with these names, for sure. There are things that will give your patient these patterns, right? For instance, hypopnea. Some of the things for hypopnea are deep sleep, sedation, coma, hypothermia, alkalosis, and restrictive lung disease. And we'll cover that again. What are they? Deep sleep, sedation, coma, hypothermia, 
alkalosis, and restricted lung disease. And as I told you, hypopnea can be associated or combined with bradypenia. And bradypenia is slow breathing, less than 12 breaths. This one is associated with drugs, alcohol, and this one could be normal breathing. So we are, what, suppressing our respiratory rate, our breathing pattern, right? Shows that we have bradypenia, and this could be done by alcohol, drugs, and this, could we sleep? We slow down our breathing pattern for those, right? Now what about hyperpnea or tachypnea, right? We talked about them, very similar, can be combined. And on that one, we look at what? Hyperpnea, acidosis, fever, pain, anxiety, all right? Same thing with tachypnea, hypoxia, fever, pain, same things with these, right? And all that means is either slower than 12 breaths or more than 12 breaths, but very similar to this normal pattern that you see here, okay? Now as we're we're really gonna get where you need to associate these patterns with very specific things. And, I, and again, this is respiratory therapy, this is test taking, this is all inclusive, right? These are breathing patterns to identify, to get you through board exams, to make you a better therapist, clinicians, all this stuff, right? So let's do this. So Kuzmal's breathing, right? That's the next one that we are. Kuzmal's got to be a word associated with this, with this breathing pattern alone. And this association, put it in your head now, is diabetic ketoacidosis, also known as DKA. This pattern right here, you, got, you have to start associating this pattern with DKA, diabetic ketoacidosis. All right, and typically our pH and our acid-base balance is gonna be around 7.2 all the way down to 6.95. So we're talking about some very critical looking, right? So Kuzmal's, what does that represent? What does that look like? We saw normal, slow, fast. Kuzmal's breathing, right? This is rapid deep. So what you're gonna see is very fast and very deep, rapid breaths, okay? That's Kuzmal's breathing, okay? Again, very particular, associate that with diabetic ketoacidosis, guys. That is Kuzmal's breathing. Rapid, deep breaths, all right? Now we get down to Shane Stokes. Interesting thing, I don't know how much in this, you guys can take a little sidebar on this, but I, I, I came across that that was actually two guys' names that discovered or, or identified this breathing pattern when they had a patient come in and they named it after that. And I believe that's for Biots and Kuzmals too. That's where they came up with the name, a little side note, but anyways, Shane Stokes. Okay, Shane Stokes, uh, same thing. We need to start associating this with CHF, and that is what? Congestive heart failure. This one, and you also see some things about the appearance, and we call this our, our terms waxing and waning tidal volumes. Inconsistent, what's going on with that, right? CHF, heart failure, head injuries, all Shane Stokes, but CHF is one they're leading you down. And this one, they, they kind of like have a little rapid buildup and then it kind of decreases. But here's the thing, periods of apnea follow. Then a, the breathing pattern's rapid, kind of goes up, followed by some apnea. Inconsistent, build up, decrease, apnea. This is what we're looking at with Shane Stokes. And we can also refer this to what? Congestive heart failure, CHF, all right? Brings us down to the next one. Keep going. This is what? Biots. Biots breathing is unpredictable. Uh, it, you cannot predict the variable on this one. And this one is, why? Because the message is getting a little, you know, mixed up. Why? ICP or CNS issues. Intracranial pressures or central nervous system, what? Problems. That's what you'll see with Biots breathing, okay? Biots breathing, very inconsistent, right? All right. Next, we come down on the list is apneustic, right? And apneustic is prolonged gasping on inspiration with a very short or insufficient exhalation. 
So we associate apnoustic breathing with tumors, trauma, okay? Very, again, insufficient expirations. Gasping inspiration, insufficient expirations, all right? Agonal, agonal is more of a descriptive, right? This is a fish out of water or what they say, guppy breathing, right? This is gonna be when you have a fish out of water. <gasps> trying, to, trying to catch breath, but they're all ineffective. That's the main point. There's nothing going on here, guys. It's their last breaths. And this is what we call agonal breathing, fish out of water, guppy breathing. This is a resemblance of that fish, how they look trying to breathe out of water. All right, last breaths. Last one here, very important. If they all are important, but this is something we might have heard of, even uh, not in RT world. And this is apnea. This is apnea. Apnea is just a term of loss of cessation of breathing. Stop breathing, no breathing. Periods of no breathing, right? We can see this with what? Obstructive sleep apneas. We can see airway obstruction, heart attack, stroke, head injuries, things like that which will associate with apnea. You should hear this many times in the respiratory therapy programs or in respiratory life and whatnot is apnea. The loss of breathing, stop, sensation, stop of breathing. You know you gotta attend to that, that's a problem. All right, so apnea. All right, so hopefully this video clarified a lot of the breathing patterns when you would see them what they're trying to get you to look at the association um, to that if it's fast if it's slow is it dka chf icp these are all going to be assessment tools right this is what we're talking about is patient assessment all these tools you can combine all these tools patterns heart rates AVGs, all these assessment tools we have in our bag that we need to be proficient in as respiratory therapists. And I can almost guarantee you that if you get your breathing patterns down and you know, are able to identify when they're telling you something, there should be no issues or no trouble when you hit those therapists multiple choice, your TMC, your board questioning, even when you're a clinician and you're out there at this, um, you know, at your facility and you see a monitor and you see a breathing pattern or your representation. You can actually identify some of these uh, um, breathing patterns just like you would in a cardiac arrhythmia, right? If you can identify that, you can, what? Be able to treat it. And that's what we're doing here. So again, thank you again for watching this video. and We look forward to seeing you to the next one. Thank you.